All right, this is a typical Spectrum football scoreboard controller. This is what the scoreboard looks like, if you can see it off in the distance. The switches are not exactly in the same place as the things that they control on the board, so it may be a little bit of a challenge to figure those things out. There is also a little readout here on the panel that shows you the time and all the information on the board. I don't use it because it's too hard to see during the game. <laughs> First of all, let's talk about how we run run the clock. Um, this is the on and off switch. It's on the left side. Here are the home scores and visitor scores. Down, yards to go. All right, here on the left side in this little panel, ball on is here, ball possession is there. I'll show you how we zero out the scores. We put zero, push the let number zero, home, zero visitor. I believe you can also reset home, reset visitor. If you do that, the scores will go blank. I like to have them at zero to zero. That way it looks like we know what we're doing. This is the down number. Now it's a little bit tricky on here because on the scoreboard the down is above the yards to go. On the control panel the button is below it. Pushing the button once will advance the down to two, three, four, and then we'll reset it back to one. Pushing, let's say you have second down, seven to go and a team picks up a first down, you can push reset down, that's reset down, and it'll immediately, it immediately goes back to first and ten. If there's a different number of yards to go, push down how many yards it is, say four, and then to go. You want to show what line the ball is on? Now right now we're showing the ball is on the zero yard line. We obviously don't have a zero yard line, so that'll never be an operative uh, place during a game. Let's say it's on the, uh, well let's say it's a goal to go situation. We have first and four, that you push four and then ball on. If you reset ball on, it goes blank. Got somebody standing in the way here, all right? That'll reset it to blank. Push reset uh, quarter, and that will go to one. Notice that the quarter the quarter is up here at the top. Even though on the scoreboard it'll be under the visitor score. Fortunately, it will automatically reset the or automatically advance the quarter as time expires, so you don't have to worry about that too much during the game. Setting the time. In JV games we play 10 minute quarters, varsity or 12, so for a 10 minute quarter we go 1 0 0 0. Now you notice there's nothing on there right now. It just says 0, so you push. Yeah, let's see, what do we push? Okay, we push uh, clock set, and that's way over here. Have to remember that. You only have to do that once a game, usually, to get that set. Uh, timeouts left. Remember to set them to three. Home timeout left, visitor timeout. On this scoreboard, the timeouts left will be very tiny numbers that are between the scores and the game clock. Ball possession. I, before the game starts, I hit reset ball possession. That makes it go blank as the possession goes during the game. If the home team has the ball first, push ball possession once. That shows the home team has it. If the visitors get possession of the ball, press it again, and then it alternates back and forth. I'll reset it so I'll blank it out because we haven't started the game yet, so we don't know who's going to have possession. I wait till after the ball has been kicked and the ball has been recovered. Sometimes there's an onside kick 
in that case the ball possession will go to the team that kicked it. Wait till those things are settled out before you start anything. Alright, now for a pregame, I'm going to oh show, let's see, we have, let's see what time it is. It's 4 o'clock, so we'll do a 30-minute pregame countdown. So I go 3, 0, 0, 0, and I go clock set, and then I go on, push the switch on to start it, and off to stop it. You'll have much more success running one of these things if you know what the rules are for football timing. You may want to watch a few games on TV. They're a little bit different at the pro, college, and high school levels. If you can see some high school games, not from Texas where they use the college rules, but from almost any other state, including California, you get a pretty good idea of what the rules are. And in any case, the college rules and the high school rules are very similar. For example, the clock stops to move the chains on a first down. The officials may give an odd signal in that case. They may wave their hands. They may give the cranking signal as the play is blown dead and then immediately put their hands over their head, waving it back and forth to stop the clock. That's a little bit confusing, but what it means is that the play stayed in bounds. The clock will start on the ready once the chains are reset. Um, putting scores up here. There are two ways to do it. You can advance them one at a time. You do that by pushing the teams, pushing the H home or V visitor and that'll put up the scores one at a time. However, I prefer i reset them there and actually I like to do it this way. Let's say the home team scores a touchdown. I just put up six home and now you've got a touchdown. If we go for two and we get the conversion, you push two, and there you get it. This is very useful in late game where a team has, let's see, did they have 38 or did they have 36 points? You may forget as you're pushing, th advancing through, you only have to push a couple of buttons to get the score correct. All right, I think that's about it for running a high school football scoreboard. Any questions? I'll try to make another video that answers them.